Next week, you're going to learn about acceleration. Um, and here on Earth, uh, everything accelerates downward toward the center of the Earth. See, it's a vector of direction downward toward the center of the Earth due to gravity. Uh, and the acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared, or 32 feet per second squared. Uh, acceleration, uh, which we'll talk about next week more, is just velocity divided by time. So how much does the velocity change uh, per unit of time? Uh, so when you drop something, right, if I let go of this book right now, then uh, what would its starting speed be? Zero. Zero, right? It would start at zero because nothing is shoving it down. It's just simply being let go of. It's like a piece of hair hanging off of it. Um, and then, would it just hang there in space? No. 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 no, because of the acceleration due to gravity, that is a force that's going to pull it downward um, toward the center of the Earth. People. So, um, does gravity act the same upon this book as this piece of paper? No. no. Yes. 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 Yeah. If you yeah. don't have air resistance. There we go. Yeah. So, gravity affects every single thing on Earth exactly the same. The acceleration due to gravity is constant, 9.8 meters per second squared. It doesn't appear to affect the piece of paper the same because of air resistance. Um, and people for eons thought that gravity affected things differently. Um, so, it's saying, what happens when the book and the paper are dropped side by side? Well, it doesn't appear that they are being affected exactly the same by gravity, does it? So why, if we know that gravity affects them exactly the same, that that acceleration is identical, the surface area is pretty much identical, right? Why does the book fall fast and the paper fall slowly? Like she said, air resistance. Air resistance. So what does the book do that reduces air resistance to the paper? It's heavier. It's heavier. Yeah. Okay, so same surface area, but much larger mass. So what can the book do more efficiently than the paper? Drop. What does it have to do to drop through the air, Chris? To push through the air. What yeah. does it do to the air molecules? It separates yeah. So there's air molecules here, and as the book falls, it has to literally shove all the air molecules out of its way, pushing them down, pushing them out to the side, getting them out of the way. Okay, air molecules move fast. So uh, when the book falls, it very quickly just shoves them out of the way because of its larger mass. When the piece of paper falls, of course, it takes its good time about shoving air molecules out of the way. And it falls much slower. It kind of looks like it like, goes with the air molecules. Like yeah. when one side goes, it goes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the groundbreaking studies about air resistance was... Um, we call now Brownian motion, how random air molecules are and how they just bump and move things that are uh, being affected by them. And how gases diffuse through a room and at what rate. And, uh, and air molecules and the collisions they have with stuff, that's what does it. So when air, not that this is on the paper, but when air slows down the piece of paper more than the book, um, or even the air resistance that the book experiences, where does the energy that the book had go? Where does the energy that the paper had go? Oh, with like the book? Um, wait, so would the energy go with the sound that it makes when it hits? No. Maybe, no. When it's falling, oh. okay, so just as an aside, this is not like something you have to know, but you'll have to know it someday. So when the book collides with the air molecules and the paper collides with the air molecules air, and you know they're affected by air resistance, what's happening is the collisions speed up the air molecules. When air molecules move faster, what are they? You guys have been exposed to this a little bit. Wind. The faster air molecules move, the more what they have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so their temperature is higher. So really what's happening is when those molecules get bumped and sped up, it's converting the energy, the potential energy that this book has to heat. Okay? So the book falls, but some of that energy is wasted by heating up air molecules. Uh, so when those air molecules get shoved out of the way, they get heated up. That's where the energy is going. Um, yeah, 
do that with a number of piece of paper. Okay, so when we grabbed the book and the paper side by side, book fell fast, paper floated down slowly because even though gravity is the same for both, air resistance is different. If I did this, but I was standing in a vacuum room, and they fall the exact same way. They really would. If you go like yeah. to Air and Space, Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum, uh, they have a vacuum tube. So you, there's a penny and a feather in theirs. And when you just flip the tube over and it's not pumped out, the feather floats down and the penny just drops really fast. But when you pump all the air out of that tube and flip it, the feather and the penny both drop like rocks. That's have amazing. You, have you seen the video where they had the world's largest vacuum mm -hmm. and they dropped a bowling ball and a bunch of feathers at the mm -hmm. in with a room full of air and then with it in vacuum? It like your mind yes. is like this shouldn't be happening because it fall at the exact same rate and hit the ground the exact same way. Yep. In your mind it's like, wait, this isn't right. It doesn't seem right that that feathers and bowling balls fall the same, but they really do. And books and papers really do too. Because gravity is the same for everything, and air resistance is the difference. So if I drop the paper in the book like this, and the book does all the shoving of air molecules out of the way for the paper, would you predict that the paper will fall uh, with the book, or the paper will float up? I think it wouldn't float up until air got under the piece of paper. Okay, if air gets under the piece of paper, we're going to have air. But if not, and there's like a corner here where that could happen, so... Mm. But hopefully the paper is just going to fall at the same rate as the book because we've reduced air resistance's effect on it by putting the book under it. So let's see. So the paper and the book fall together um, when the effects of air resistance on the paper are reduced because the book is doing the pushing the air out of the way. So that would be number two. What happens when they were dropped with the paper on top of the book? about what causes the difference, what, what details do we really need to make sure go on our paper that we may not have already talked about? I mean, is there anything that I haven't put on the board yet that, in number three, what caused the difference briefly described? Maybe we've kind of covered it, let's see. Take your time at the third part.
study guide for module one. We'll go over that. And I'll put the camera. Um, I think all five definitions are on the test this module, so make sure you get all five of those guys. Study guide. Study guide first. Maybe we'll do the summary if we actually have time this week. The summary has some of the math problems on it. Next week we'll definitely focus on the math from this module more, so... Um, Next week we really need to go fast because there's a lot to do and a lab and a bunch of math and everything. So, Okay, so study guide uh, problem number two. We'll start with Chris. Ready? If an object's position does not change relative to the reference point, is it in motion relative to the reference point? No, relative to the reference point is the same state. Bethany, a glass of water sits on the counter. Is it in motion? It depends on what it, um, the point is. Okay, so it, what is your reference point that you could say the cup of water is not in motion? The counter. Okay, so relative to the counter, it's not moving. So what kind of... To a person walking by and it would technically be in motion? Or the person moves the yeah. water itself. Yep. Or even the molecules moving in the cup. Yeah, so uh, you can make a case either way. If you say yes, make sure on a test that you would explain your answer. If you say no, make sure you explain your answer. Uh, yes or no, maybe not good enough for that example. Uh, Jenna, a child is floating in an inner tube on a still lake. His position does not change. He watches two girls jog along the shore of the lake. The girls are keeping perfect pace with each other. Neither is pulling ahead nor falling behind. Relative to whom is the child in motion? Um, relative to the two girls, the child is in motion. Relative to the child, the first girl is in motion. And relative to the first girl, the second girl is not in motion. Good. So, relative to the girls, the boy is moving. Relative to the boy, the girls are moving. Relative to each other, the girls are not moving. Um, which, since we think of running, it seems like they should really be moving, but relative to each other, they're not. Just like the two eggs rolling down the incline side by side are not moving relative to each other. Yep. If their velocity vector and their velocity magnitude are the same, then they are not moving relative to each other. Okay, Oksana, what is the speed of a boat that travels 10 miles in 30 minutes? And it wants you to answer in miles per hour. So how did you approach that problem? Because there are several ways to approach it. Or if you'd rather write it on the board what you put, that'd be fine too. Or you can talk and I'll write. divided by the number of hours since we went in miles per hour. 
she found that the question says speed, so we don't have to worry about direction, so that's perfect. If it had said velocity, your answer would need a direction also. Um, and Lily, what is the speed of a runner, so we're speed again, who runs six kilometers in 45 minutes? Please answer meters per second. So I did six um, kilometers over one. I need a new marker. Ooh, a marker. <coughs> Some people say kilometers. You can say it either way. It's kind of weird. I think it's an English way to say it. I say it's kilometers. I say kilometers. I say kilometers. I say kilometers. I say kilometers. It's kilometers. It's kilometers. Yeah. I will say the different ways. All right, over one. And then time is 1,000 meters over one kilo. Okay. And then that equals 6,000 meters. Okay. And then you do 45 minutes over one times 60 seconds over one minute. And that equals 2,700 seconds. And then you do 6,000, um, what is it, 6,000 meters over 2,700 seconds. And that equals 2.2 meters per second. Oh, it's 2.2. Oh, 2.2 meters per second. Okay. And that's speed again, so you don't need a direction, so that's fine. 2.2 meters per second. Good. And if you, um, if you're not sure where to cut off a long number or something, you can just feel free to round to the tenth place. And in chemistry, I'll teach you how to actually round. But for now, round to the tenths is a great rule that will pretty much help you get it right most of the time. Uh, and all the time in this class, you get it right if you just round to the tenths place or whatever. Uh, so Ava, label the quantity vector or scalar. And so you can do the first three of these. And then tell if it's speed, distance, velocity, and we didn't cover acceleration, or none of those. So A says 10 meters. OK, is a distance unit in meters? It's scalar. It doesn't always have to be, but it doesn't give you a direction. So um, if it gave you a direction, you can have positional vectors, I guess. Uh, and how about 1.2 meters per second squared east? It's acceleration. When you have that time squared in the denominator, it's acceleration. It's 3.4 feet per hour and slower. It is scalar and it's speed. Even though it tells you it's slowing down, uh, it doesn't tell you the direction. Um, so it's, I don't think that's good enough for making that into a vector quantity. It's so speed is scalar. And at least 56 liters. Scalar. A scalar. And what do liters measure? Mm. My kids can never remember. Is that gallons? Liters no. and gallons yeah. measure, another, measure the same thing. It's like liquids. What about the liquid? The volume. Oh, that's a volume. Oh, volume. I was like, well, there's a word. <laughs> oh, yep. So liters measure volume. You can do like liters of gas, which like we could figure out how much gas fills this room in liters, or you could do like liters of water in that water bottle. Um, so gases and liquids, usually the volume is in liters. And did you say that scalar? You already said that. Okay, so 2.2 miles per minute west. It's a vector quantity and it's velocity. And 2.2 millimeters per year. Scalar and speed. Scalar and speed. That'd be like glacier movement or something, I guess, because that's not very fast, is it? All right. How many of these do we do? Number eight. Which eight? eight? That's eight. it. Eight. So Joseph, a car and a truck are traveling north on a highway. If the truck has a speed of 45 miles per hour and the car has a speed of 57 miles per hour, uh, the truck is ahead of the car. What is their relative velocity? Their relative velocity is two miles per hour. Okay, and how did you decide whether you're going to add or subtract these two numbers? If the if the things travel in the same direction, you subtract. If they travel in different directions, you add. Which Perfect. seems kind of weird because when you have the eggs going together, we double it. It was like x times x equals two x. Like you think though, but there they subtract even though they're going together. Well, they're moving together, so you're adding. Yeah. 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 And here, they're they're going. still moving towards each other, but not really. Right, so the back truck is gaining on the front truck, right? 
So they're moving together, but not as fast as what would that be like 112 miles an hour? I mean, obviously they're not coming together at 112 miles an hour. If you added, you would get an answer that doesn't make sense. So uh, when this one's going and this one's catching up, if they're still going the same direction, the back one is gaining on it, but not at 100.